you have been tasked to perform the operations on multiple systems and you are looking for a tool that you can use to perform the operations on multiple systems but at the same time then don't worry powershell workflow is here to rescue in this tutorial i will talk about the powershell workflows what makes them different than the powershell scripts what are the key benefits use cases of the powershell workflows and i will take you through the demonstration on writing a powershell workflow and the things that need to be considered during the development of these advanced scripting or you can say uh, workflows through the powershell workflow my name is navneet kumar i am a microsoft certified trainer and the founder of traincrash technologies powershell workflow is a powerful tool for automating complex tasks and managing multiple systems efficiently confused with the definition excuse me so let me explain it in a easier way powershell workflows are actually used to perform the operations in parallel unlike their counterpart that is the powershell script which executes in sequence and completes all the commands or functions one by one either they have dependency or not it doesn't matter it works in sequence unlike that powershell script powershell workflow can execute two ag activities in parallel that helps saving the time for long running jobs not to wait for the first job to complete to move to the other one if they don't have dependency but if they have dependency then you can execute them in sequence as well so you have the complete control that whether you want to run them in parallel or in sequence that is the one main advantage of using powershell workflows over the powershell scripts another advantage is that powershell workflows can run or when i say long running tasks so these tasks can be running for hours or days they can they can be suspended or paused and resumed but if i talk about the powershell scripts you do not have the option to pause the script what you do is you can start it or stop it if you uh, if you uh, start the script it will start from the line number 1 from the first line so this is what makes powershell workflows different there are lots of key differences between powershell workflow and scripts powershell workflows uh, run parallelly powershell workflows use the different engine all together that is powershell work windows workflow foundation wwf they use to execute these activities powershell workflows use activities not the commands if i talk about the key benefits so parallel execution is one of the benefit that the activities can be executed in parallel it has robust error handling capabilities it can have long running tasks for hours or days like i mentioned multi device management so we can manage multiple devices simultaneously concurrently we can manage them because of the parallelism offered by powershell workflows we also have the capability of suspending and resuming these workflows so that is another thing that makes it unique writing the powershell workflow is quite advanced thing or you can say uh, is quite different than the powershell functions or scripts that you write you need to consider many of the things while you are writing these powershell workflows if i talk about the use cases of powershell workflows they are used for automation for bulk operations they are used for uh, developing run books so these run books can have activities to do the things in parallel uh, if you are an azure administrator and you do the automation then in azure there is a service called azure automation and there we have the option to run the powershell workflows there as well so these are all text based run books or parallel work, or workflows uh, where we define the activities to complete in parallel or in sequence with that control so without any further delay let's jump into the uh, demonstration on writing the powershell workflows let us start writing the powershell workflows and before i start the development of the powershell workflow let me show you the powershell session configuration with the command get ps session configuration so this command shows you the powershell session configuration from powershell 3 onwards the administrators were uh, uh, allowed to register the powershell session configurations uh, pssrc files powershell session configuration files uh, 
there they can define the attributes they can register the powershell session configurations uh, we use that for just enough administration as well when uh, we want to register the uh, endpoint based on the required configuration as per our tool that we are going to use so some of the registrations are already done over here that you see microsoft.powershell configuration is there that you use to run the powershell scripts whereas we have microsoft uh, uh, powershell workflow the windows workflow foundation the wwf i was talking about so this is the microsoft powershell uh, workflow another configuration that is registered on the system and this is the uh, microsoft powershell 32 bit so these are some session configurations registered on this system so that means i can run the powershell workflows on this machine to execute or to develop the powershell workflows first of all all i need to define that it is the workflow just like we write the function in powershell and we define the name for that function let's say demo and then we write this function here we define that okay it is workflow now powershell workflows uh, can have the name in verb hyphen noun also so that they look like they are the you know uh, they are the powershell commands kind of thing or you can keep that single keyword as well now you can define the parameters also if you want to parameterize them just like powershell functions are you uh, you know parameterized when i talk about the workflows let's keep this thing short and simple so i get the service from this system and this service is going to be get service i execute this somehow the tab completion is not completing get service service name winrm if i execute this i will be calling this function at the end so that i need not to call it every time so the name of the function uh, workflow is sample so it will get the services from this system this service winrm service uh, PowerShell workflows were introduced in PowerShell 3 and at that time they did not support this uh, positional parameter. So if you could have executed this command in PowerShell version 3, then it will fail. This workflow will not work because positional parameters were not supported. They were supported in PowerShell but not in PowerShell workflows. Today they are supported. So uh, I'm in PowerShell 5.1. So I need not to worry about that. I can use this. Now, what is the difference in this and the PowerShell command? The difference here is when I put second command. If I put my second command, which is let's say get process and this process name is let's say PowerShell. So I want to get the PowerShell process on this uh, system. The tab completion again did not work. It takes a while. So let me now call this. This time if I have executed two activities, basically in PowerShell, if I execute them, they execute in sequence. But in workflow, I have the option that whether I want to run them in parallel or sequence. So if they do not have any dependency, then I can say parallel and I can declare that these two things will happen parallelly. So I have the control that, okay, these two activities will be executed in parallel or sequence. That is the first difference between PowerShell and this. This time they have been executed in parallel. I can configure sequence also or what I can do is inside the uh, parallel I can do the nesting of sequence so what I can do is I can say sequence sequence based on my requirement suppose I'm going to do some service related operations and I will be doing more than one uh, operation so I want to get the service winrm if that service is not uh, running so I want to start that so I can put my all entire logic over there like uh, uh, logic to you know if then conditions and then uh, if that is not running then start i'm just keeping it simple so sequence it will get the service and start the service so both of the activities will happen in uh, parallel uh, which activities this uh, uh, get service uh, i mean this this activity and this one because this is part of the parallel so it is still be executed along with the service related operations but these two activities will happen in sequence so you can do the nesting as per your workflow requirement so these service service related commands were executed one by one but with, along with that this command was also executed because this activity was also executed because it was parallel so that is how you can run the activities in parallel always i say activity activity i'm every time saying activity not the command what is the difference over here between the command and activity actually these powershell activities have been developed 
in a way that they look like PowerShell command, but actually they are not, they are activities. And it is also not necessary that all the PowerShell commands are uh, developed as activities. So sometimes you might face problems with that as well. For an instance, if I make a new object and uh, this new object that I want to make is so new object object type is going to be ps object ps object all right the output of the new object commandlet must be assigned to a variable that's fine so i need to define a variable where this object will be stored and then i will add some members to this object dollar x and i will pipe this into add member command to add some members into it some properties so node property, let's say I create the object for let's say trainer name and node property value is I'm hard coding this value as Navni and then I will access this dollar $x. You will notice that you will be able to see rest of the things but you will not see that object with Navni, this custom object. And why don't you see that because there is no such activity like add member in PowerShell workflow. It is a PowerShell command that you are executing. So now, because I mentioned that PowerShell activities, workflow activities are developed like they look like PowerShell commands, so people are confused or this result into misconception that okay, we are putting the commands here. No, we are putting activities. If I show you the list of parameters for this get process, so here you see there are lots of parameters with PS, PS remoting behavior, PS credentials and so on. They have been added as dynamic parameters into this workflow. As soon as I mentioned workflow, if it, is, it was not mentioned as workflow, see what happens. When you go with get process, the same is treated or same is the PowerShell command this time. And do you see those PS related parameters here like PS computer name and so on. You don't see any parameter like that, which were appearing over here. So because it is designed to work on multiple systems in parallel, so that is why this PS computer name parameter is given and you can run any command with this. It is a common parameter. You will see PS computer name, PS credentials, remoting behavior, all these parameters common in every command, be it get process or be it get service. So whatever the PowerShell activities you have, you will see those parameters here. So get service and if I take you to the list of that PS computer name credentials and so on. Well, let's come to the uh, point here. So these are the PowerShell commands, but not the activities. So that does that mean that I cannot uh, write a workflow using PowerShell commands? Because otherwise my development will be very much limited because there are, uh, you know, PowerShell commands for almost everything, but maybe not the activities available. Answer is you can still do that. And what you can do is you can wrap this into inline script, inline, a script and wherever you want to use the PowerShell commands in PowerShell workflows, put them inside this inline script block. So what it will do is it will start the PowerShell session configuration or I mean PowerShell instance it will launch and will execute them as PowerShell commands and then will do the job that is required. So in this way, this time three things will happen in parallel. The services will be processed, the processes will be processed and the object will be created. Last time you did not see that object with the uh, uh, with the uh, member as trainer name Navneet as this property, but this time you will see that. This shows you that you see this add member command is there because new object was there as an activity, but add member was not there. So that is why last time it was not there. Okay. Now this time you see the trainer name is coming up here as Navni. This attribute comes because this command has been executed because of inline script because it was executed in PowerShell basically. So for each parallel in PowerShell is used to process multiple objects one by one, uh, excuse me, in parallel. So suppose this was the PowerShell last time. Now this time I say dollar processes that I want to process are uh, one of them is PowerShell process. The other one I want to use is uh, SVC host. So these two processes I want to process. So I can use for each parallel. Unlike in PowerShell script, we only have for each. Here we have for each parallel also. So 
where I can define a variable, let's say dollar process, excuse me, dollar process in dollar processes. Oops. Processes. Oh, excuse me. Processes. And now I start this for each and I want to perform this get process for all these processes. So name I'm providing is dollar process. One process at a time. So I can process these objects in parallel through the PowerShell workflow for each parallel. So this is how for each parallel can also be used in uh, PowerShell workflow. So we not only have for each to process objects or iterate the objects and do the operations one by one, but in bulk we can do in parallel. So in this way, you have seen that this PowerShell workflow or writing PowerShell workflow is way different than the PowerShell scripts. You need to learn all these tips and tricks to you know work with this, how to uh, put your activities into the sequence or parallel based on your business automation requirement, business process automation requirement. Uh, you, you can use the inline script to run the PowerShell commands or put the PowerShell commands inside the workflow. Okay. So I hope this tutorial was informative to you. Do subscribe my channel for more videos and uh, um, hit the notification or bell icon to uh, get notified for uh, new videos that I do. And uh, like this video in case uh, you find it informative that gives me encouragement to uh, work further and uh, share more information with you guys. So thanks for watching once again and uh, see you in another video.